Howdy there, everyone. Welcome on into VG Emporium, video game music and more. I'm the proprietor of this here shop, Rage Cage, and I'd like to start off by saying that um, it was a pretty fun time. Last week, we had uh, Mike Levy of XVGM Radio and Dude, You Haven't Played This Game on to talk about the N64 as well as uh, bring on some deep cuts from that console. And if you haven't listened to it yet, what are you doing? Go back. It was just last week. Go check it out. So now here's something else that's cool. It is the 1st of June, which means it is June. And uh, if you were here last year in the month of June, uh, you would know that it was the Masters of VGM, the first one, and we're going to be doing it again. And if, but if you're new to the shop or new to VGM podcast in general, um, here's a little something that'll kind of inform you as to what Masters of VGM is, as well as uh, what it's going to be this year, courtesy of Ed Wilson of the VG Embassy. Hey everyone, it's Ed from the VG Embassy. It's almost June, and I'm sure you know what that means. It's almost time for the Masters of VGM event. This is an event where for the entire month, all of your favorite VGM podcasts will focus on one theme around video game music composers. This year, we're sharing composers that we feel might deserve a little bit more of the spotlight than they're currently getting. There's going to be a ton of shows participating. Um, let me see. I have that list here. Uh, hey, hey, Larry, you got that list? No, no, not the grocery list. The list of all the podcasts. Yeah. What do you mean you gave it to me already? No, I don't. I don't have it. Oh, look. All right. Oh. Oh, here it is. My bad. My bad. All right, so it's going to be my show, as well as Nerd Noise Radio, Shujin Academy VGM Club, A VGM Journey, VG Emporium, ReVGM, Gameable Audio, VG Mania, Rhythm and Pixels, CRT Sound System, Volt Supreme Synth VGM Dreamstream Machine, and more. More. What do you mean more, Larry? Who are the, who's the more? No, I don't, I don't know. Did you put more on here? All right, well, I guess there's going to be more. If you want to find out who the more is, check out Masters of VGM 
masterspeakers.com on your favorite web browser or hit up the tweets at Masters of VGM. We hope you enjoy the event. And there you have it. And um, I'll be having my episode ready by mid-June, I believe. I'm going to be doing two underappreciated and then two up-and-comings. And I'm pretty excited to see, like, what everybody presents this month. So now we're, we're uh, five and a half minutes into the show already, and I haven't told you what this episode is about. Um, it's a grab bag. Last one I did was on Thanksgiving. Uh, so this is uh, technically the fourth grab bag here. So, you know, like any other cool shop, uh, you know, they've got to have a grab bag. You know, usually it'll be filled with, like, weird little random bits from the shop. If you're, like, going to a music store, I'll have, like, you know, maybe a CD and a few stickers or whatever. You know, so, hey, it's just a bag full of just random tracks. Um, going to be mostly just listening to the music. Maybe just give you a little bit of information, but nothing too deep here. So, um, to start, what we opened up with was Let's Get On. We're Friends. Round one from Liquid Kids, composed by Kazuko Umino. And in this game, you play a little hippo dude named Hippopo out to save his hippo gal. And along the way, rescue his hippo pals. Now, the best way to describe this game is that it's uh, Think Bubble Bobble, except instead of just being a one screen or going up and down, this is a side scroller going back and forth. So this game is considered a spiritual sequel to the New Zealand story. But instead of using bubbles or umbrellas or whatnot, you use the water bomb, which uh, freezes your enemies in place, and you can be used as like temporary platforms, or you could use it to affect elements in throughout the stages, such as putting out fires, making plants grow, uh, starting like waterfalls, whatnot. And as far as how the game looks, it's just, it's another cutesy platformer. It's like all the characters are just like small and tiny, but they're really bright and kind of pop out of the you know the backgrounds and everything. The backgrounds are really nicely detailed, like kind of just nice, bright, beautiful colors. And the music just fits perfectly with everything that's going on in this game. It's like, you know, a little more, you know, like how this is, kind of more just kind of cutesy, not like, you know, a little more slow paced, nothing too crazy, not like, you know, not like Darius or other Zuntata madness that goes on. And I forgot to mention that this is a Taito arcade game, so of course, you know, one of the members of Zuntata, Kazuko Umino, was responsible for this music, and she has also done th games like uh, Thunder Fox, uh, Puli Rula, which is very similar to how this music sounds, except a little bit more wackier. And, um, let's see, Bust a Move as well. And I really do like this soundtrack. It's kind of, you know, very different from what I'm usually listening to, but, um, I do have some memories linked to this from when I was doing my backpacking trip, like, at the beginning of it, when I was making my way down the California coast, and I can't remember exactly where it was. I want to say it was between somewhere, like, uh, between Los Angeles and San Diego, and just have a very specific memory of coming up, you know, walking up a road, and then coming up to, like, you know, the part of the main highway that was, like, you know, not exactly the highway, but, you know, part of the city road or whatever, but, um, I just see stoplights, car going, and then, like, uh, you know, ocean just a little more farther away. And I just really need to do an episode about the VGM I was listening to while doing that trip, but it might be a multiple episode thing because it was a six-month thing from all the way from San Francisco to New York in six months. But it's definitely gonna take a while to remember things because that was nearly ten years ago. But I will eventually just take the time to sit down with myself and just kind of remember things and then work this, at, like, this series of episodes out. Because I got some stories to tell. Now I just have one last thing to say about this game, and that is you can actually purchase it on Switch. It's, uh, I think about eight bucks, and I've been considering getting it. I haven't gotten it yet because I am currently entrenched in, uh, the new Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. I've probably sunk about 60 hours in it already, if not 70 by the time this episode airs. I'm actually surprised I'm recording this right now because the hooks that game have in me are deep. But now is not the time for Zelda talk. It's time to reach in this here bag and see what I got next for you here. Let's see. Ooh. This is an interesting one. This here is Egyptian Duel from Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories. And let's see here. The composers are Naoko Ishii, Hiroshi Tanabe, and Waichiro Ozaki.
And that was Egyptian Duel from Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories, composed by Naoko Ishii, Hiroshi Tanabe, and Waichiro Ozaki. So uh, yes, Yu-Gi-Oh! Got into this card game when I was a freshman in high school, and that was it, because uh, the table where I played it at, there was another table across the way in the cafeteria area, and kids would throw shit at us! So um, I just kind of stopped playing because I didn't like getting harassed, and it wasn't, you know, it was an interesting game, but it wasn't for me. So you can imagine my excitement when I, uh, you know, for somehow I, for some, I don't know how this game came into our possession, but uh, you know, playing the card game on the PlayStation, um, yeah, that was that was a delightful time. No, it wasn't. I don't even know if I've got past the uh, intro section of the game, which is where this music plays in, because uh, it was just kind of confusing and how it all worked. It didn't work like how the physical game worked. I, I don't know. It's just it was really weird and hard for some bizarre reason. You know, eventually I think I did make it past the introduction section which takes place in ancient Egypt and uh, you get to the modern times where you're actually playing as Yugi and then I don't know how far I got after that. I think my sisters also tried playing this as well as one of their friends and I don't think they got any farther than I did. So now all I know Yu-Gi-Oh! as is just the, the anime where each different pro tag has just like crazier and crazier hair. But one thing I will give to Yu-Gi-Oh! the card game is that a lot of the, um, you know, the card art on the cards for the monsters and all the things is really cool. That's what I'll give it. As far as I'm concerned, this PS1 classic should remain a forbidden memory. So let's move on. Let me reach it onto the bag here and see what we got next. Huh, this one's a little extra big. I want to come out of the bag. How did they get this in the bag? It doesn't want to come out. Hold on. Hold on. Gah! Oh, that's why. It was two of them stuck together. <laughs> Isn't that neat? All right, so what are these buddies here? So we got Town One from SD Kaiji Blader, composed by Sizla Okamura. So um, I guess we'll start with the original Famicom version, and then followed by the YM2151 arrangement that he had done.
and those were Town 1 from SDKG Blader, composed by Sizzla Okamoto. Uh, the first one was the original Famicom version, and then the second one was a YM2151 FM arranged version that he had done. I'm not quite sure when, but you know, it's a little, it's a little rough. It's a, it's a demo, so you know, it's a little rough. So to uh, kind of make up for that, I think that's why he laid on the reverb a little heavy there. So what kind of game is SDKG Blader? Well, looking at maybe uh, the title frame, like if you were, that's all you were able to find, you would think it was an action game because it looks like a some kind of Sentai dude with a sword and a super deformed, so that's the SD. But it is actually an RPG based off of the uh, Uchu KG or uh, Metal Hero series. And so what, what is this Uchu KG thing? Well, it is a uh, series of shows. I don't know if it's just one show or multiple shows where, um, you know, they're space sheriffs. They are guys that come to the Earth to fight monsters of the week. It's, you know, more tokusatsu sentai madness. Though this game is not based on that show. It is set in the same universe as the show, I guess. It's kind of like a weird little side story thing, maybe? Well, it, you know, the game itself is like a standard Famicom RPG inspired by Dragon Quest. You know, so I'd imagine it's just an okay game, but with a pretty good soundtrack, and that's because it was by Sizzla Okamoto, who is the composer for Viewpoint, which was on the Neo Geo Arcade. And if you haven't heard it, do yourself a favor and look up Viewpoint OST either on YouTube or on VGM Rips. Uh, make sure it's the arcade version, and uh, yeah, get ready for a just a crazy ride of just all kinds of different styles. And another cool thing to do would be to go check out uh, Sizzla Okamoto's SoundCloud, because um, he posts a lot of this music. This is where I found these two songs was on there. And uh, yeah, his uh, soundtrack for Lost World, which I don't know if it was a game or if it was just an album he did. But um, yeah, one of the that music, uh, my buddy Wade, who was my first guest on episode 39, um, actually sent me the link to the one of the songs from that album multiple times because he, uh, you know, over the years, he just forgets that he sent it to me. So he just sends it again and again and again. But I don't mind because it's a really good song. It's a really good album. I would highly recommend you go check out Sizzla Okamoto, SoundCloud, Lost World. But enough of my yammering. Let's uh, dip back into this bag here and see what we got next for you. And, oh, Mondo Cool. We got something that uh, just freshly arrived in the shop here. This is uh, Ambient 4 from Vernal Edge, composed by Plus W Plus. That was Ambient 4 from Vernal Edge, composed by Plus W Plus. And I'm gonna take a wild guess here that for all, like the glitchy beats 
Um, they used a VST called D Blue Glitch. Um, you know, it's one I used years ago when I was, uh, you know, making music using uh, regular DAWs. Because um, just the way how it sounds, it reminds me of that VST. But there might be better tools out there to do this. But that's that's my guess, and I'm I'm gonna stick to it. So now let me clarify as to what I mean by this is a newly arrived. Um, this game only just came out this year, like only a few months ago. And I done played it, and I done beat it. Um, not all the way, I've still got some stuff to do to, until I get 100% and get the true ending, but um, yes, I, uh, I played this game and I thoroughly enjoyed it. You know, the story, um, you know, there's something to be desired there, but it is totally made up for with the, uh, the gameplay and just the visuals. It's a beautiful game. You know, it's all pixel art, like the backgrounds are just like highly detailed, the character sprites are all well animated, like very smoothly animated. And as for the gameplay, you know, it has you exploring, it's kind of considered a Metroidvania. But um, it has a lot of mobility options, like it gives you all these different dashes and jumps and like ways to like just go up vertically all over the place. And the combat is crazy because it's a uh, think um, Devil May Cry. It's like a combo based system, whereas you knock your like knock your opponents out of like their guard and then you're just juggling them as long as you can to just chip them away. And as for the music, you know, it's it's good. Um, you know, there are a few standouts such as this one, which plays in the first area after the first cutscene, and you know, starts off like kind of this cool ambient and then these breaks come in. And I'm going to say I was pleasantly surprised by that. And, you know, the soundtrack, it's, you know, it's pretty mixed. Um, you know, there are some tracks that are just, like, purely ambient. And then there are some that are really, you know, just, like, action-oriented. Heavy on the beats, heavy on, like, you know, the guitar, bass, everything. And because the um, way how the uh, action works in this game is that there are some free-roaming enemies kind of going over the place for the most part. Like, you get into a section, it'll get closed off, and then you get to fight off about one to two, one to three waves of enemies. And, uh, yeah, the battle music is kind of like a variation on the music that is playing throughout the stage. So now the story of the game, um, you know, it's it's all right. You know, it's uh, you play as the protagonist. Her name is Vernal. Um, I also heard Vernal, but it's th kind of weird. Vernal, what is that? I I I say Vernal, and um, yeah, she's just like goes up to these floating islands, and you're trying to find her father, who um, is, like abandoned her and her mother, and her mother fell sick, dies, and so she's just basically on a revenge binge. So now you know she is a smart ass. You know, she's also a little bit of a dumbass, but you know, hey, she got raised in the woods since she was a kid. So you know what. What, what can you do there? And, um, you know, she's also really, you know, very uh, battle savvy. Like, she, uh, throughout the game, you gain all these different battle skills and uh, get to use against enemies. And it's pretty crazy, like, uh, how you can just com go back and forth comboing. It's, it, it's like I said, the action is fun in this game. So now, getting back to the uh, music, uh, or the person that composed the music, Plus W Plus, um, they don't really have much to their credit. I'm like, you know, I found their band camp, and it looks like they did a few games for this company before called... Hello Penguin, which is a series of joke games. I haven't really read too much into it, and as well as another one called Downpur, but they seem to be a composer for this company, Hello Penguin Team. And so with that, we're gonna get into our, getting down to the bottom of the bag here. What do we got? Here we go. Oh dear, this was taking me about 15 years back. Oy. So this is Stage 11, Clock Tower. Whoever said something just now, step out. From the Rock Girl Toho Arrange album by the Hobby Atelier Carrot Wine Group.
was Stage 11, Clock Tower. Whoever said something just now, step out. From the Rock Girl, Tahoe Arrange album by Hobby Atelier Carrot Wine Group. And this was specifically an arrangement of the song Maiden in Blood from the game Toho Scarlet Devil Land, Embodiment of the Scarlet Devil. So what can I tell you about Toho? What do I know about Toho? Um, it's a bullet hell shmup featuring witch girls made by uh, one guy, Zoon, as well as all the music being made by this guy, Zoon. And for some reason, from the mid to late aughts, they were uh, just all the rage on 4chan. I, that, that's all I know on them. That's all I know. And, you know, I haven't really listened to too much of the music of the original, you know, of the Toho games because they're, I don't know, they're just not to my taste. Like, their style is just, I don't know, I can't quite put my finger on it. But this, this original album kind of made it palatable for me because, uh, you know, one, is in the style of Mega Man. How, how can you go wrong with that? And then just the way how they're arranged makes it just all that more bearable. Bearable. Bearable? Bearable. And truth to tell, I don't remember how I found this album well all the way back in 2008, but, you know, I'm glad I did. I've kind of listened to it on and off throughout the years. And, uh, but one thing I did not know is that they made more. Six more to be exact. Um, the latest one being Rock Girl 7 in 2018, as far as I can tell. And for the life of me, over all these years, I have not been able to tell if this is fake a bit or actual chip tune. Um, you know, it's like it sounds like could be actual NES music, but like that, the yeah, percussion, like especially that bass, that kick, that kick sound, sounds like it's a kind of like a wave channel thing. So my guess is if it is actual like chip, the NES chip tune. They're using the uh, Famicom Disk System because they've got the two squares going. They got a sounds like a triangle, the noise, and then that kick is like kind of the outlier. So they have to be using that wave channel. But I don't know, you know, that or they're just using VSTs and a DAW, and they're just doing their best to make it sound as authentic as they can. And you know, that's all I got for you on this. That's all I got for you today. We we reached the bottom of the bag. The bag is done. So I'd just like to thank you all for once more coming into VG Emporium. And then as far as what I have planned for you this next coming, this next week, um, I'm not quite sure. All my brain power is going towards my Masters of VGM episode. Um, that's going to be coming out either mid or towards like, you know, mid late June. And uh, yeah, so we'll see what happens. So um, yeah, so you can find VG Emporium on all your favorite podcatchers, such as Spotify, Google, Apple, Amazon, Audible, as well as on Twitter and Instagram. And then you can find myself, Rage Cage, on uh, Twitter, Instagram, and uh, SoundCloud. So how to, how to end, end this? Uh, ah, here we go. So remember, uh, next time you go into a cool shop, be it like a music shop or a little like, you know, locally owned shop, and they have a grab bag, get it. You never know what's going to be inside it. Could be something cool. Might be something not so cool. I don't know. It's, it's the mystery. It's the fun of finding out what's inside that little tiny bag or big bag, depending on where you're going. You know, they're usually anywhere from like a couple to five bucks. And so, hey. Just do it. Have fun.